If you're ready to harness the power of your communications data, blast off with Nihilus today. Hi, my name is Ron. And hi, I'm Black. Awesome. Uh, welcome to Coding with Nihilus. Uh, so in this live stream, we talk about programming languages, we talk about APIs and helpful tools for building your applications. And as well, we love to talk about Nihilus and building with Nihilus. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, let's talk about what we're going to cover today. But before we do that, Log, how you been? I've been doing fine. Thanks, Ram. And you? I've been doing good. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more sunlight. I think we've all been getting more sunlight recently. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here we have like uh, freezing rain and a little bit of snow. So it's having okay. kind of gloomy. Let's all right, see. so I guess we have to be a little careful outside, but uh, hopefully it warms up sooner all around. Yeah, yeah that's right. Cool. cool. So uh, what are you going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about how to build a scheduling app. And I think I have too much going on at the bottom. There we go. Cool. How to build a scheduling app. Uh, we talked about this a bit on Friday or sorry, on Wednesday. And what prompted me to kind of look into this was I was talking to a friend and they're like, I have an event going on. I have so many people coming from around the world and I want them to easily schedule different services. So if they need to do their hair, if they need to do their makeup or they need something done like a service, how can they easily book all of that um, uh, in one place? Mm -hmm. So what I put together is a demo that shows you both sides where one, if you want to provide a service and we'll talk about different services that may be relevant to us, um, how can you go in and uh, share your availability uh, set up a calendar so people can publicly book you. And as well, you can set up different services depending on what you want to offer. And on the flip side, we're going to look at the actual user. So if I'm a user, how can I actually go in and book these different services? So if I want to book a service like a haircut or grooming for my dog, which we've talked about recently, um, how can I go and book those seamlessly? And we're all going to do it in one application, and it's done using the Nihilus scheduler. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's let's jump in and take a look at the demo. Uh, so one thing to highlight is we have a blog on this. Take a look at our blog at nihilus.com forward slash blog forward slash how to make a calendar scheduler. So we have a walkthrough of the full application and as well the code mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to take a look at today. So let's jump in and take a look at the actual application. So let me share my screen and then we can go ahead and do that. Sure. And I know blog recently you've done uh, a blog post and as well a live stream on uh, the scheduler and how what a scheduler is. So we may not dive too deeply into the setup of a scheduler, but let's just take a look at this demo and then we can kind of go through how we're actually using the scheduler to create this functionality. So here I'm, uh, uh, I have a, just a scheduling app. So it's just gonna be for scheduling and I have different cards here. So I've just put some placeholder cards for now. But ideally, you'd have two different types of users that come in. So one would be a user that wants to provide a service, so they would be the provider, and mm -hmm. then someone that actually wants to book the service. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual provider side. Here, I just have a simple view where you can add a service or you could go back. And the same thing on the booking side where you can look at different services. So right now, we don't have any available services. So let's go back and go to the provider side, and we're going to look at adding an actual service and creating an actual scheduler, a Nihilus scheduler. So I know, um, Blog, we've been talking about our dogs recently, so maybe we can do a pet grooming service. And here we're going to say uh, we offer uh, pet grooming. Uh, we are a uh, mobile service. So this service will come to you. That's and we're going to cool. look at setting up. That's a service that we just <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah. So here, we're going to look at setting up an actual calendar, a public calendar that you can make available. And we'll take a look at the code uh, shortly in terms of how we did this. And we're doing this seamlessly using the Nihilus scheduler. So as soon as I click on that button, I can go ahead and create an actual scheduling page. And this is all UI that's built out for you uh, through the actual scheduler uh, by Nihilus. But you're calling the scheduler API into your application. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at that part very soon. But what we've done is we've actually embedded the scheduler within our application. So we can load up the scheduler for the different types of users. 
And in this case, we're looking at the actual scheduler, the configuration part or the editor part, we can actually go in and create many different public calendars for yourself. So here we just took the information from the, the text input from the modal, here's pet grooming. And for location, we're just gonna say we are a mobile service, we come to you. And we're not gonna look at like all the configuration, we're just gonna go through the different steps of setting up a scheduler to see what it looks like once we're done. So here you can go ahead and set your availability and as well, you can actually sync with your own uh, calendar. So that's what you'll see uh, eventually that'll sync with your calendar, uh, your own calendar, and then it'll show the availability to your actual users. So here we're gonna go create. So we're gonna create this calendar. Mm -hmm. And what this is doing is it's actually going to do two things. One, it's going to create an actual Nihilus scheduler, and it's going to make, avail make it available for anyone to see. So we can copy this link, but we actually don't need to copy this link right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to close this window, and we're going to complete the flow of adding a new service. So we're going to click Add Service. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to store the service for us. So we should have this service available. It should be available on the screen. And we can always go back and take a look at the service through the actual customer point of view. So I just want to double check to make sure everything's running. So I want to make sure the application's running. So let's take a look. And it looks like we have the application running. So we should be able to see the actual service being added. I'm just going to double check if it's being added to Superbase because I've noticed one or two issues with Superbase recently. Oh, okay. But it, See. But it doesn't look like the service is being added at all. So I'm just going to run, rerun the server to see what's going on. <laughs> As uh, me and Blog, are, uh, Blog and I are seeing, uh, live demos are always a fun time. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> There's always something going kind of quirky at times. Let so me like, try yeah. going through this flow once more. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to go pet grooming, uh, mobile pet grooming. And let's look at setting up the actual calendar. I think we may have one already because the uh, Nihilus is going to store this information for us, but I want to make sure it's actually persisted within the application. Yeah, so let me go ahead and just remove this one for now. Mm -hmm. And let's create a new calendar here. So we're going to do pet grooming and location as we come to you. And we'll go through the steps of creating the actual Nihilus scheduler. <laughs> And now we're gonna close this. And once we close this and we do add service, it should show up here if it's actually saved on our backend. So I don't see any errors besides a warning. So for some reason, there we go. There it, is. it just took a little longer. I don't know if it's the, the computer's getting tired from the week or something, <laughs> maybe it's slowing down, but here we see that the service has been added. So as a provider, what you would want to do is you'd want to go through and add all the different services that you want to provide. Mm -hmm. So here we have pet grooming. And anytime we click on this, what will happen is it's going to load up the Nihilus scheduler. So you can go in and actually configure, uh, uh, configure the scheduler as you like for all the different services that you provide. Yeah, so you can kind of like change the description, the title, colors, and everything, right? Put your own logo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and now let's go and take a look at the actual user perspective. So if I'm a user and I want to book a service, I want to book pet grooming. So I know blog, you have a dog. And yeah. I know during winter time uh, in the snow and everything, it's a good time to get your pet groomed, uh, mm -hmm. get them all fresh. So what's yeah. going to happen in this case is when you click on this, you're going to actually load the scheduler itself. So this is what a user would be seeing. They would actually be seeing the scheduler itself load up uh -huh. so that they can go ahead and book time slots. Mm -hmm. And this takes all of my availability from the upcoming week and makes mm -hmm. it available to any user if they want to go ahead and book a time slot for their pet grooming. That's awesome. Cool. Now That's that great. we've gone through the app demo, I think it'd be a good time to switch to going through an overview of what the application is doing, just at the, looking at the different steps before we jump into oh, um, nice. looking at the code. Cool. Uh, so we we brought Nyla along as well, um, and we are we're using a few tools here. We're not going to take a deep dive on those tools, but we've talked about them in our past live streams and as well on our blog. Uh, so for the UI, the user interface, we're using Next.js, and just for persisting all the different schedulers that we create, we're using Supabase to do that. 
So in Superbase, we have a table. Anytime we create a new scheduler, we're just adding it to a list so we can track the service available and the scheduler URL. And uh, on the front end, we're doing some basic routing where essentially you can route between either a service provider or the actual customer or user. We're not gonna spend too much time on this part. It's just kind of like basic logic between jumping between different views. I think what would be useful is if we spend a bit of time just looking at what this part looks like here. Yeah, that would be better, I guess. So we're gonna look at how can we actually grab the services if I'm a user? And as well, what does a setup look like when we actually wanna um, start creating services as a provider? Well, let's go ahead and jump into the code. But before we jump into the code, uh, just a friendly reminder uh, to go ahead and like, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, we're just giving you this bit of time before we continue with the demo. Uh, we love to hear your comments, your feedback, and as well just to get, see uh, your engagement in the videos that we're creating. So if there are more, more topics you want us to talk about, I know Blog's been uh, trying to get someone to come on board our show as well. So if, we can, if anyone's interested in coming on board the show and talking about building with Nihilus, we'd love to hear that as well. Uh, yeah, but yeah, go ahead and like and subscribe. We would love to have our first guest. Uh, we haven't got any. So just let us know if you would like to participate in the live stream. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Now let's jump into the code. So I think there are a few places we want to go with the code. Um, and I will share, like we will make sure we share all of this on our GitHub repo as well. Uh, so I will share a link to that shortly. And I think a the few places I would like to look at is one of the user flow. So let me share my screen. And we're going to take a look at the user flow first. And for the user, what we're essentially doing is we're just grabbing all the services that are available on Supabase and we're sharing it with them. So we're using some basic UI and we're just grabbing what's available on Supabase. So every time a service provider goes in and creates an actual service, we're gonna store it on Supabase. And when the user goes in, they can quickly grab all the different services and they can select which one they actually wanna book. And Essentially, the part that we've kind of talked about now is just collecting the available services services to display. So for now, we're just using a persistent layer to show all of that. And the other part I want to look at is actually the service provider flow. And I think this part is a little more interesting. And we're doing a few things here. And I think, Blog, you mentioned it earlier. is like, how are we actually adding the Nihilus scheduler? Like, where does the Nihilus scheduler actually exist on the front end? Yeah. And since, been... since we're doing this in React, uh, from our actual documentation, uh, how it's set up is that you actually add a script tag uh, oh. with the Nihilus scheduler and you add it in and you embed it. Here, what we're doing is we're actually using a uh, React hook. It's a use effect hook. And this hook is called every time the page renders. Uh -huh. And what it's doing is it's essentially just adding, it's using the DOM, the actual browser do uh, document object to add a script tag and it's grabbing the actual Nihilus scheduler and it's actually appending it to the document page or to the document. Mm -hmm. So okay. anytime we load our application, we just grab the script and we append it to the application. So it's available to the user to either create an actual scheduler or actually configure any existing schedulers that they have. That's actually easier than I expected. I expected <laughs> it more complicated, but that's pretty easy actually. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the one thing with the use effect is anytime you have a use effect, just as a cleanup, anytime you exit the, the component or you leave the component, you just want to remove that script. So we're just removing the script from the page. Uh, yeah. So this function that's returned here is actually the cleanup for the actual component. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Yeah, so here we're actually adding the Nihilus scheduler. And as well, another part I want to show is how do we actually open the Nihilus scheduler or the Nihilus editor when creating a service. So we have a function here, it's called show Nihilus, and it takes the Nihilus um, object, object that's available to us, and it shows all the information with our access token, uh, some styling, so you can add styling as you need, mm -hmm. and as well, it takes the service name. So some of the information you've already added mm -hmm. in the modal, it grabs mm -hmm. that and it puts it inside the Nihilus scheduler for you. Ah, uh, that's cool. It's actually yeah. good to have defaults so you can create on one page and then it's going to be reflected on the scheduler. That's great. Exactly. 
And, and this is really all the integration we needed with the Nihilist scheduler. We needed to bring in the script and as well, we just need to actually show the Nihilist uh, scheduler when the user clicks on the specific button. Well, it's pretty convenient. So you can basically create any web, uh, website that you like and then just add the scheduler in there and just use it. Yeah. Cool. Smooth integration. Yeah, so we, yeah, this was very seamless to integrate. It was actually fun to add this inside of React. Uh, so I have a, tweet, a few tweets out for that as well. But we will definitely share code samples on our github.com forward slash nihilist samples repository uh, for you to take a look. And I'll share the full application there so you can get a good idea of how, how simple it was to build this application. Awesome. So I really like the demo. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was good to show both sides because normally we kind of have either you're using the scheduler or you're creating the scheduler, but now you have a full seamless happy path flow yeah. of being able to create a, an actual event and being being able to actually book it all in one application. Mm -hmm. Yep. So blog oh. question is what's coming up next? <laughs> uh, yeah. So next Wednesday we're gonna talk about. Debugging your PHP code with uh, site. It's, I never know how to pronounce that kind of things. Site? Um, yeah, that one. So, so it's basically a way to actually do debugging on your PHP code, which is pretty awesome. I mean, it's not new, but I never knew it. And I've been using PHP for a long, long time. So it's going to be an interesting one. Awesome. And as well, just before we wrap up here, I just want to share the link to our blog, nowlist.com forward slash blog. We have content coming out every week um, and we'd love for you to kind of take a look at different ways you can build with Nihilus and all the functionality that's possible on our blog, nihilus.com forward slash blog. And last but not least. Yep. Remind everybody that we have our live streams every Wednesday and Friday at 11 EST and 8 AM PST. So we do a lot of live streams every week. <laughs> yep. Tune in every Wednesday and Friday. This was a great blog. Thanks for thanks for joining. Thanks, friend. Thanks, everybody. Bye, take care. Take care. See you.